today we're going to be talking about the value or not of taking an herbalism course. Should you bother or should you just go at your own self? <laughs> so we're going to be talking about that. But before first, before we dive in, I want to invite you to a free training webinar workshop that I have going on next week. It's called the five best herbs for your home apothecary. We are going to be talking about five herbs that are super easy to grow that you can find in the grocery store. And we're going to be talking about their medicinal values and ways to work with them for your health and wellness. And you are going to be shocked at just how broad use these herbs are, these super easy to find herbs. The workshop training comes with this free 29 page guide. It has all the information from the workshop, plus it's got recipes and remedies in here. That way you can go home and start making remedies yourself. So please join us. I'm going to put the link so you can save your seat in the top comment below and also in the description. I'd love to have you join us next week for five best herbs for your home apothecary. All right, let's dive into the topic of today's video. I thought I would pop on here and just quickly do a, a video on and a little have a little chat with you about the question, should you take an herbalism course? So my friend Heidi over at Rain Country did a, a talk on this the other day, and I'm so happy because she mentioned my, me and my school and uh, my courses, <laughs> which I'm very grateful for. And she made a lot of really great points about whether or not you should take an herbalism course. And I thought I'd go ahead and make this uh, video because I have some of my own thoughts. I've also listened to other herbalists who also talk about that question, should you take an herbalism course or not? And it's a very deeply personal answer. We're all very different. So let me just say this to start off. I've been a teacher for over 40 years of my life, not counting the years that I taught. I've been teaching herbalism. So I'm hitting 60. I'm a grandmother and I've been studying herbalism for a very long time. I started off learning on my own. I was looking for research. I had a few books and I dived in and I actually took care of many of my health complaints on my own without a course. But what happens is you eventually, for most of us, because most of us don't have time to decipher if something's accurate or not, you will hit a wall. Back when I started learning, there wasn't very much not information around. The internet was like literally, I don't think it existed yet. <laughs> Keep in mind, I went through my senior year of high school and calculators had just come out. <laughs> so anyway, so I'm dating myself for sure. But I just wanted to just talk about this for a moment. I'm the kind of person that needs to learn hands on. I'm the kind of person, you, and I'm talking here about learning style. So just knowing what your learning style is very important. So ask yourself that. What is your learning style? Are you able to go and do a lot of research on your own to make sure that you've got correct answers? Do you have people you can ask? Do you have a mentor in your life you can actually reach out to and say, hey, can you answer this question for me? I have this question about herbalism. What do you think? And I would suggest maybe even having a few of those people because um, herbalism is one of those very flexible endeavors that where there can be a lot of different correct answers, which is nice. Are you a visual learner? Are, do you like to read? Do you like to watch videos? Can you take it in that way? By the way, watching videos is mainly an auditory skill because you need to hear what the teacher is saying on the video and then watch what they're doing. So it's a combination. And then are you an audible learner? Can you drive down the road and listen to something without seeing it and learn just fine. Personally, I am definitely very hands-on. I like to make the stuff myself and I like to play around with it. I like to make my salves. I like to smell the herbs and the essential oils and you develop an intuition by that. So that's just one of the questions you need to ask is what kind of a learner are you? Are you a self-starter? Can you go and get all the research answered that you need without being dangerous? Okay. And then I just want to say this too. When you start your herbal learning journey, whether you do it on your own or whether you take a course, you number one, have to learn how to know that you're making effective herbal remedies because 
it's really easy to make something that's ineffective because you're working with yourself and different people and not all remedies are going to work for every single person. I My body's very different than my husband's body. If he presents with a complaint, I'm going to make him something that fits what he needs versus something that I need. An example of this is he had really bad hand cramps the other day. And so I quickly thought, okay, what are some herbs and essential oils that are anti-spasmodic, anti-inflammatory, and pain relieving all at the same time? And I whipped him up this little quick remedy. It took me literally less than five minutes. His cramps went away immediately. It was really nice to see that. Whereas for me, I'm going to be making myself something totally different if I have an issue like that, because I my problems don't present in the same way. So that's just a little example. And then I just want to mention that a lot of people think that you can go on the internet and you can learn anything you want to learn <laughs> and, and not spend any money doing it. It's totally free. Um, and then you're going to be good to go, right? And I'm going to definitely question that because I know that when I go on the internet to do searches, I feel like I've got a good starting point. I've got a very good place to just dig in at the beginning. But then what happens as I dig in is, okay, I've got this question and now I've got that question. And now I'm wondering, hey, I heard this over here and it's totally contradictory. What does that mean? So all of a sudden now I've got more questions than answers and having a really good teacher or a mentor or somebody you can talk to and ask or a group or a community can be really helpful. And then there's always those false fads. We we get the fads out there. How about uh, back in the 90s? Take St. John's wort for depression. <laughs> Guess what? St. John's wort, and this is the infused oil right here. Look how beautiful and red that is. St. John's wort is exceptional for supporting the overall nervous system and the brain of the body, including mood to an extent, but it's not an antidepressant as in a medication. It's not like Prozac. It's, it doesn't act like that at all. So people were very disappointed in the 90s when they did not get the results from St. John's wort that they were getting from their antidepressant medications. And that's because you have to know how to use it. And you, and if you want to come off your meds, then you need to have some support in doing so. And yes, herbs can be a wonderful helper for that. There's also free but very dangerous advice. And I cannot tell you how many times I've come across recipes online and they give me chills up my spine because they are downright dangerous. I once came across a very well-known uh, lady who had a home decoration uh, website and uh, home decor, and she had a little essential oil section. And she was putting out this recipe online that was 25% essential oils. It was filled with phototoxic essential oils way over the dilution maximums. And she was saying, put this on your kids. <laughs> <laughs> and I just thought, oh my gosh, oh my heavens, this is like really terrible. And then the other thing is that there's a lot of information out there in older books, even that a lot of people have that's outdated. Just the other day in one of my student groups, I had a student ask, hey, I came across this recipe in this one herbalist book and it had comfrey in it. And she was saying to take an ounce of comfrey every single day. And I'm like, back then, that's what people did. And that they they just did that, right? Not understanding that there are pyrolizidine alkaloids in comfrey and some pyrolizidine alkaloids can cause liver damage if used too much or over too long of a period of time. Is that advice okay? Again, that's a personal decision and you need to div it, dig in deeply to comfrey and the pyrolizidine alkaloids that are specifically found in comfrey and understand the phytochemistry of the plant. And then you can make your own decision. You might be wondering what I think of that. Yes. If I had a situation where comfrey was called for internally, I know how to use it. So it's safe. That's what I'm going to say. <laughs> But I wouldn't recommend just anybody go out there and drink a cup of comfrey tea every single day. I think that's very potentially uh, dangerous. So just be aware of that. The other thing is if you if you are working on your own to learn herbalism, I'm just going to say this with some qualifications, but we all start off in this society with the idea of the pill, I call it the pill mentality. 
what pill do you take to solve this problem, right? We want to cover up pain and not heal it all the way. We want to make the GERD to go away or the acid reflux go away. So what do we do? We take a pill. And what ends up happening with people as they get into herbalism is this. You start thinking about herbs the same exact way that you think about pills. What herb do I take for this or that situation? What can I do for this or that herbally? What's natural? What essential oil can I take that will help me think better, right? Again, it doesn't work like that. And you may not ever learn that if you're working on your own. What will happen and what happens to an awful lot of people is you start working with herbs with that mentality. And now all of a sudden herbs aren't working for you. And you just assume that herbs don't work. The fact of the matter is herbs work for everybody. I'm going to say that again. Medicinal herbs and essential oils work for everybody. The thing is that you've got to know how to match the herb with the person, the essential oil with the person, the herb and the essential oil with the actual root cause of a problem. And once you know that, you're going to be very effective. And I'm going to just make probably a challenging statement here and say, that's probably not something you're going to learn very quickly on your own. Like it would probably take 50 years, okay? <laughs> Unless you're learning from somebody. The best of the best herbalists who've had decades of experience, and I'm going to use that word experience, they're going to be able to, and maybe they learned it on their own, but I Probably not. Like even Rosemary Gladstar learned from her Armenian grandmother, an herbalist. So most people who get into herbalism and who are safe and effective do learn from somebody in a structured, organized way. All right. That's another thing I want to talk about. When you start learning herbalism and you want to do it on your own, you're going to be skipping around the internet an awful lot. Okay. Just how are you going to find what you need? How are you going to know if the stuff that you're finding is good? And are you going to be finding it in the right order? Because as a school teacher for many decades in the classroom, I taught third grade through eighth grade. I was a mathematics specialist. I also taught teachers and I taught special ed for the last five years of my career. I taught special needs kids. And I can tell you right now that if you do, if you teach something or if you're learning something without some kind of an organization or some kind of a structure to it, it's haphazard. It's not going to make a lot of sense. And now you're sitting here trying to piece all these pieces together and organize your thoughts and get things squared away in a notebook or in your head or however, whatever your style of organization is, it's not going to work real easily, if at all. So I just wanted to talk about that as well. Finally, let's go for the kinesthetic aspect of this. So you can get on YouTube and you can watch somebody take yarrow, for example, and make an infused oil. And by the way, I've got hundreds of videos on my YouTube channel doing just this. I'm a demonstrator. I'm a teacher. So I do teach how to do things and I explain the science behind it. So you're going to find maybe a video on this or a video on that. And there's just... How do you put it all together in a, a way that's going to turn you into an herbalist for real? So I, I just wanted to mention that as well. You can find your favorite people. There's an herbalist who um, is very proud of saying that she doesn't hold knowledge for hostage for money or something like that. And I say hallelujah to her. She has a massively huge audience. And I don't know if she's taken any courses or not. Who knows? I don't know what her experience is. But the fact of the matter is, is that if you are a good herbalist and you are trained and you have spent that thousands of dollars like I have. Actually, I'm a person that, yes, I could have done this on my own, but would I know what I know now? No. Would I know phytochemistry deeply? Mm -mm. Would I be able to know which essential oil to pick up for a person's body when they present a certain way? No. It, it, and not at this point. And I've been studying literally almost 20 years, but by taking courses from people who have more knowledge than me and who organize the information in a way that I can learn it, uh, especially, I'm just gonna mention this, some schools put a, a, time for, a time limit on the learning and I am not a fan of that, okay? I am a fan of the transactional value of let me pay for this 
excellent knowledge. And in exchange, I'm going to be able to learn and have a valuable skill that I can pass on to my kids and my grandkids and to share with other people when they need it, which I do all the time. And guess what? I read comments in some of the threads that say, oh yeah, you could make herbal remedies, but nobody's going to appreciate them and nobody's going to use them and blah, blah. That's not true at all. This man came into my office the other day and he was, he didn't know, he didn't know anything about herbalism and he had just seen my sign on the door and he was curious. So he came in and he said, we started talking. I explained to him what I did. And he said, I thought you were way out there. <laughs> and I said, no, I'm not way out there at all. In fact, I'm very conservative. And I just know that this works because I have helped a lot of people, including my own self over the decades. And he told me, he says, do you have something for this, that, and the other? And I said, Actually, yes. And then I talked with him for a few moments. I learned more about his constitution and how his body operates. I found out if he was on medications or not. And I asked him a little bit more about what was presenting for him that he felt like he needed help with. And I gave him three different remedies. He wrote to me about a week later and he said, this salve is amazing. And he says, I need to get some more of that. I'm going to be out in a couple of weeks. I'm like, great. And then he said in the same letter, he's yeah. And the tincture, the jury's out on that. I'm not sure if it's working yet. And then, and then I had given him an herbal tea and he really just liked the tea. It was for his bones. It was a mineral rich tea. But anyway, he then wrote me back the, a week later and he said to me, okay, I want to just buy all the things you made for me before because they're all working. <laughs> I was like, great. The, the fact is herbs do work if you know what to do with them. And that's what I teach. I teach people how to be effective herbalists. Let, back to the courses though, and the time limits. I'm not a fan of that. Life happens to all of us. I'm extremely busy right now. And I have to tell you, I'm probably enrolled. I will never stop learning. All right. I've taken courses on uh, the lymphatic system. I've taken courses on um, all kinds of anatomy and physiology. I've taken deep classes on phytochemistry and then all the beginning herbalist classes, of course, too, way back when. But the, the fact is that in order for me to keep growing, I want to keep learning. And I just love learning. I'm a teacher. <laughs> I, I love learning. I believe in it and I need it for myself. It's one of the ways that I grow as a human being and as a person. And I know that I'm giving people safe, effective remedies and herbs that work for their body. But anyway, you want to probably, if you don't, unless you like time frames and time limits, you might want to be looking for schools that provide what they call lifetime access. Lifetime access doesn't mean that it's going to exist forever and ever, but it does mean that as long as the internet's around, and I'm gonna say usually, because schools are all different, you have to read the terms of service, but usually you're going to have access for as long as that school exists or as long as the internet exists. And that's a really good thing. I had a lady buy one of my courses a couple of years ago, and she wrote to me literally two years later, and she said, you know, I bought the course and I couldn't get to it. And then I had my, her mom had passed away. She had another couple of tragedies happen and she just couldn't get to it. She says, can I still take it? And I'm like, absolutely. Here's your login information, get started. And I'm here, you know, for you, <laughs> ask me questions. But anyway, a good herbalism course is going to provide support for you. It's going to be around. Hopefully there's a, an active student community where you can actually engage in conversation with other like-minded people, because I'm just going to say this, herbalism is still not mainstream. It's still out there. It's still odd in the world right now. And you will probably find when you start learning that people will think you're weird, okay? Or people will make comments about you, or they're going to call you a witch, or they're going to call you a witch doctor. <laughs> they're going to, you're going to get these comments. And especially if you're a Christian like I am, and you're a believer, those comments can actually hurt. I actually had a woman one time tell me I was a witch. And when I said, no, I'm a Christian, I can't be a witch. She actually said, why are you denying it? You're a witch. And I was like, okay, <laughs> not gonna, not even going to engage with this person at all. But anyway, it's really nice when you could get into a student group, a student community who 
overall roughly shares the same value systems as you do and is doing the herbalism as well because then you can have a place to share and talk about even difficult situations um, and it's just very wonderful all right and then let's talk about a few other things about taking courses. Some herbal schools will make you feel like you must have a certification, all right? And that's why they're touting their certifications and things like this. So I'm very transparent about the whole certification thing. I do have right now one certification course for family herbalism, and it's because I was asked, begged actually, <laughs> over and over, can I please create a certification class? And I'm like, why do you want a certification? You don't need an herbal certification in America to practice herbalism. You can set up your herbal business, you can be a teacher, you can be a practitioner, you can be a clinician, you can make products, you can do whatever you want, and you don't need to have a certification. But people were telling me that uh, they needed it for insurance purposes, or they needed to prove numbers of hours, or they needed to, they just wanted it for legitimacy's sake. They wanted to be able to say, yes, I'm I trust this woman who has this school, me, the School of Botanical Arts and Sciences, and I got an, a certification from this school proving that I know how to do client intakes and protocols. I know how to study plant medicine. I understand phytochemistry and herbal actions. And yes, I can make a safe, effective product for somebody. So a certification lends a certain amount of um, legitimacy to what you're doing for some people. Now, if you are working just with your own family, it's that's a decision that you can make. I have several herbal certifications and really I don't ever talk about them because they seriously don't matter. Although I did have my insurance man did ask for proof that I knew what I was doing. So there you go. Now I wanna talk aromatherapy for a moment. Ar aromatherapy and herbalism are different slightly so that working with the essential oils, I'm just gonna smell the peppermint for a second. When you start learning with me, you're going to learn about both the herbs and the essential oils. And the essential oils are simply another herbal extract. That's all they are. <laughs> it's like deciding to work with a tincture or an infused oil or whatever, but that's all it is. Anyhow, um, I just want to say that uh, you will learn both of these with me. Um, I was getting ready to talk a little bit about how aromatherapy is different. So an aromatherapy certification is uh, legitimized in our country because aromatherapy is recognized in most states as an alternative health practice or an integrative health practice. In fact, some hospitals like the UCLA and many others all over the United States, um, especially the training hospitals, they have integrative sections in their hospital where they actually work with the essential oils with certain patients and therefore aromatherapy as a certification is actually very le legit and I'm actually getting ready to put a certification course together for a level one certification this year in aromatherapy so um, I just wanted to mention that about the cert whole certification thing. I was listening to an herbalist who was ranting and raving about how herbalists who tell you you need a certification are lying, blah, blah, blah. And if somebody's telling you have to have a certification, what are they actually saying? Are they explaining why and why not? Because maybe some people do. If you have to show your insurance guy a certification to be able to do your business, then I'm going to just say you need a certification. If you don't need that piece of paper, then you probably don't need the certification. If you're an aromatherapist and you want to practice in a medical setting or as a clinician, you probably should have a certification. Not to mention the fact that essential oils are more dangerous typically than working with like tinctures and infused oils and stuff like that. So you can hurt yourself much more easily with the essential oils. And anyway, that's pretty much what I wanted to say about all of this. Truly, your own personal experiences with the plants, that's the very, very best experience you can get, course or no course. Just going out there and growing your own plants, harvesting your own plants, 
drying your own plants and creating with your own plants. That's the best thing you can do to really start learning deeply. And then when you compound that and layer that experience with knowledge that you're getting from an actual phytochemistry expert like Lisa Ganora, which I've taken classes from her, or from Dr. Robert Tisserand, or from a number of different people, you're going to become very powerful in your herbal knowledge. And you're not going to have people tell you, oh, this doesn't work. <laughs> okay. So I just want to make sure that I hit on everything here. One last thing I wanted to talk about is um, philosophy and values. So the philosophy and the value system of the herbalist is extremely important to me. Um, some people may not care, but I will tell you this, that herbalism in our country for some reason, has really some like pagan, more pagan roots. When you take herbalism coursework from some schools, you might be encountering Hinduism, Buddhism, Eastern religion. You might be encountering uh, Druidism, the occult, Wicca. I know this because I have encountered these things myself. And it's very easy to get drawn into these different kinds of philosophies, religions, topics. And as a Christian, as a believer, we are told explicitly to stay away from those kinds of things. <laughs> it, it says it all over in the good book, all over. And so I'm the kind of person that I'm not going to take any chances. I'm just going to say, absolutely not. No way. Jose, goodbye. And, but the problem with that is, is that it's really hard to find a Christian herbalist who's good, who actually teaches. So I'm just going to toss that out there for as food for thought, and just be sure that you are choosing a person who is your flavor. There are a lot of really good herbalism teachers out there. There are a lot of really good herbalism schools out there. And you need to find somebody who jibes with you. One last thing I want to talk about is affordability. It's so funny. Some people think that my courses are super cheap. <laughs> and some people think that my courses are on the expensive side. So it's all a matter, it's all a matter of where a person's coming from and the value exchange of the knowledge versus the money is really what it boils down to. That's a completely individual choice. So I just wanted to mention that I have courses that range from free all the way up to a few hundred dollars. And I believe like when I compare my course prices with other people's course prices, I'm still middle to maybe a little bit lower. And that's because I do try to keep them affordable. It takes an awful lot of time to put a course together, to be honest. It's a lot of work and it's challenging but yet rewarding. And that's why I do it. My mission is to get an herbalist in every single extended family. I've seen over and over again that people who invest do great things. My students, many of them have gone on to have really wonderful client practices and businesses. They wouldn't have done that if they hadn't invested in themselves. So anyway, those are my thoughts as a teacher and as a, a school owner and the founder of Healing Harvest Homestead, those are my thoughts about education and herbal education and whether or not you should take a course. All right. <laughs> I'm Heidi Villegas with Healing Harvest Homestead. I do welcome your comments below. I would love to hear what you think about this topic. I just got through, I did answer in the threads over on Heidi's talk on this topic. And obviously, Heidi's got some really good experiences in a lot of different areas, and she's pretty amazing. I, I really admire her, and we think very similarly about most things, and I just thought it was such an interesting topic, and I thought I would just share some of my viewpoints on it as well. All right. I hope you enjoyed this. Comment, like, subscribe if you want to. I've got a lot of great stuff on my channel and I've got some free gifts for you that you can get in the first comment or in the description below. And I really appreciate you being here. Oh, by the way, <laughs> I am opening up the ninth round of Ditch the Drug Store next week is the enrollment week. I would love to have you join us. I have no idea why I didn't mention that earlier in this talk. I probably should have been mentioning it over and over again, but I didn't. So <laughs> there you go. I hope you join us in the course. It's amazing.
All right. I will talk about, oh, one last thing. I didn't mention this either. Next week, I'm doing some free trainings on the five best herbs for your home apothecary. And I'd love to have you join us for those trainings too. Totally free. There's a 29 page book that comes with them. And it's just a chance for you to dive into some herbs that you can easily find and start making some remedies of your own that are generally effective for most people. All right. I'm going to sign off now. Have a really awesome day. Learn herbs. I love them in whatever way you decide to do it, but get your learning on because the time is short where you're going to be able to be finding good information. AI is on the rise. That's artificial intelligence. Information on the internet is completely changing. Get on people's email list who actually send information out uh, because that's another way that you get assured, hopefully, that you will get accurate, good information from a real person who's actually writing the information themselves and not relying on artificial intelligence. Okay, that's all I have to say. I will talk with you guys later. Thank you.